from recruiting and consulting firm RiderFlex. I'm your host, Steve Urban, and here is your RiderFlex episode of the day. Just uh, put you on our little Instagram. Say cool. hi, Steve. What's going on, brother? Hey, what's going on, Tofik? How are you today? Doing well, doing well. Tell us about what we got going on here. I really appreciate you being on the Rider Flex podcast. I, I think your story, right, and your family's story for Lola's is, is perfect to share with our listeners. Awesome. I'm excited to be here. Thanks, brother. Yes, thank you, sir. Tell, so let's start, before we get into Lola's, give us the, the personal stuff, right? Where you grew up, tell us about your family, um, give us all that stuff. And then before we get into business and the, all the entrepreneurial stuff. <laughs> yeah, you bet. So, you know, it's kind of crazy. So I'm half Filipino and half, half Pakistani. So two different, completely different cultures. Okay. Mom and dad met back in West Virginia. They were in residency over there. Uh, dad was head doctor over there. My mom was getting through medical school, finalizing her practice there. And, and they met, sparks flew, and boom, they got, they got hitched. <laughs> You know, crazy things on my dad. So both, I have two older sisters, actually. There's a 10-year gap between me and my oldest sister. Okay. And they were both born in West Virginia. My dad got a job in a small town called Independence, Iowa. Maybe 2,000 people. I know, where it's, I, I, know where you're, I know where it's at, yep. You know, the Mental Health Institute, the, the MHI, that's what they're known for. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, yep. All right. So my dad got the job there and then moved us to Winthrop or moved us to Independence. And my mom ended up getting a job in Winthrop. And, uh, you know, she worked in Winthrop. My folks lived in Waterloo and Boomer was born in 1986. Both now, <laughs> both of them. So both were doctors. Yes, you got it. Absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. And so you, and that's where you grew up. That's where you went to high school. I did. So I went to, I went to Catholic school, going to St. Ed's in Waterloo. Then I went to a public school and then my mom eventually worked her way up at the small medical practice in Winthrop, Iowa, population 700. She took <laughs> over that medical practice. So she, so she serviced everybody in town. <laughs> yeah, everybody knew her, the farmers, the whole community. It was, she was a of life for the whole community. Now, now, can I just ask, so if you'd go to the, if you'd go to the grocery store, would people walk up and be like, Hey, Doc, listen, I got this. I got this pain in my arm. What do you think this is? And like, she's trying to shop for groceries. <laughs> yes, all the time, everybody would just come up to her and be like, "Hey, I got this issue." I got this. Elbow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. It's like during football games, somebody would get injured. My mom would immediately rush to the field. It was so bad. Right. Like you know, it's like because I played football too, and I'm just sitting there on the sidelines. You know, you take a knee when somebody gets hurt. My mom right. just rushing out, rushing out. <laughs> like looking at her, like she's here to save the day. You know. That's uh, okay. That's awesome. So everybody knew you guys in town, obviously, and she yes. knew probably everybody. All right. Absolutely. All right. All right. Cool. So, uh, and then uh, after high school, so then now we'll walk us into the, where's that transition where your, your mom was doing recipes or something. Walk us into how Lola's was created. Talk, talk <laughs> about those early days. Yeah. So, I mean, so Lola's, we've only been around for three years, but our story starts from back when I was a kid. So okay. my okay. dad was in the army. He served uh, in the army for 30 years as a U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel. Oh, wow. So he would travel all the time. He was gone almost my entire life, but I would spend my summers with him so um, I could spend some time with him because when the military says, hey, you're going to Fort Bliss, New Mexico, or you're going to White Sands, New Mexico, you're gone, you have to go. So I, I would spend time in the summers with my dad and go to medical school, but my mom pretty much took care of me. And growing up, she would always create awesome home cooking food for me. You know what I mean? Okay. I'd have everything from biryani, which is a gourmet Pakistani dish that my dad's mom taught her how to make. My mom would get all these delicious adobo chickens, these fresh foods, basically fresh pork, fresh everything, just whip them up into homemade classics for me. But the key thing that was always a staple at her home was her hot sauce. All right. She always made hot sauce. And she now this, this this is going back even when you were like in grade school or, or you, as far back as I you can remember. Elementary school. This okay. is when I'm, gosh, maybe seven years old seven, eight years old, okay. like we would always have a huge spread of, you know, we'd have the delicious biryani, gobi, maybe some chicken adobo. And then we'd have just these mason jars full of okay. hot sauce that everybody in my family would dump all over their food. Okay. And, uh, you know, I've been eating it my whole life. So the transition from that you know, started when I was a kid. So growing up, you know, I get through high school, move out here uh, to Des Moines, which is uh, here. Uh, to, go to, to go to school because you went out to, to go to college. Yeah, yeah. Went to All college. Right. Went to college at DMAC. Went there for two years and then finished up my bachelor's in finance over at Granby University, yep. private college there. And, uh, you know, I was working a corporate job. I was working, and it was a great corporate job. I was working for a big financial institution here. Had a wonderful role, wonderful position. They were super supportive of what I did. Okay. One day we had a food day at work. It was a Mexican food day. 
Okay. Oh, oh where, where you bring, you bring in, uh, uh, you bring, yeah. everybody brings something. Oh, potluck or whatever they call it. Okay. So All right. Everybody All right. had taco bars, taco shells. And you know me, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 20. How old was I when I started Lola's? I was 29. You know, I'm 29. I'm working. I'm building a career, climbing that corporate ladder, but I'm so exhausted from working and stuff. I, I've totally forgot to bring something. And it's like five minutes and I'm living downtown and I live right by where I work. I rush, rush out the door and I turn back around. And I'm like, shoot, what? I forgot. I got to bring something. There's a box of hot sauce. Okay. Sitting. Okay. Grab the whole thing, bring it with me, head into work. All of a sudden lunchtime rolls around. I put the hot sauces out. They're gone. And, every, and people are, and then people are like, Hey man, uh, where, where, where'd you get this? Like, this is great. Like, is that how it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You no, know, my inbox got flooded. I had people walk by. They'd be like, Hey, tough. That was my nickname back there. Tough. Okay. Tough. Well, what hot sauce is that? What do you got? What do you got there? I'm like, oh, it's my mom's stuff. I'm like, are you sure? Because I feel like I've had that before, but it's phenomenal. If, if I just want to buy some, I'm like, sure. You, you know, you can have the rest in my container. You want to buy them? Twenty bucks a jar. I had, <laughs> I had boom, seven, boom, 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 boom! All of a sudden, you're an entrepreneur, just like that. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> right? So I'm just like dealing these transactions at work while working, and then you know, all of a sudden, my inbox gets flooded with emails. Everybody from my director at work to my manager was like, hey, what was that hot sauce? We We'd like to get some of that you know and i'm like oh cool come by my now, desk now, now is this is this happening like over a course of a few days or a week or what, well, what it's is happening it? that day it's happening that, that day. day right during that food day at work it's crazy wow okay wow and so you're you're like okay yeah and then you're like oh, i'll make some make some money on these fine i'll sell them <laughs> exactly. All, right. Exactly. all right all right and then at the, at the end of the day are you driving home like then then like are you thinking hold on this might walk me yeah tell, tell me how that happened for you you went home thinking wait a minute this could be something Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I, you know, I, every, I sold out what I had there. I'm walking home and, you know, everybody's encouraging me, sending me messages to me, man, you ought to be selling that stuff. And so I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do it. So I went ahead, called my mom, said, mom, your hot sauce. Everybody loves it. I'm going to take it to Mark and I'm going to sell the heck out of it. What'd she, she say? What'd she say? Yeah. She's like, yeah, go ahead. Okay. What do you need? My mom was like, so happy. Like her face really? lit up. Was really? just, she was just like all That's for it. My great. mom has always supported every endeavor that I've done my whole life. That's great. That's great. But, wow. but you told her, you're like, yeah, I can sell it and market it, but I, st I need you to make it. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. Exactly. I, I said, we'll figure it out. You know, I don't know anything about food, but, but we'll figure it out, mom. You know, so I did. I, uh, I, my mom and I, we bought a bunch of jars. We went to like, uh, gosh, I can't remember some kind of website online, bought the woozy jars. I bought these little craft, little brown labels. In fact, I've got an old jar that I'm going to show you here in a little bit. <laughs> old jar craft Avery Brown label and I would just print them off at home and slap them on a bottle and we'd make them in my uh my sister's home and then we'd take them to farmer's market and I'd sell them what year was this this would have been this would have been four years ago so four years would have been okay what, okay okay did you, did, you, did you immediately slap up a website and go on face and you were doing all the social media stuff like hey we got them for sale too were you doing that oh yeah so i mean i was working my full-time job making hot sauce designing the cheap wicks website and then uh creating social media doing the facebook doing the twitter doing the instagram creating content all while pedaling my car around town trying to sell hot sauce out of it <laughs> okay so let me just take a pause. So you're working your full-time job at night and in the mornings, you're making labels, you're going on Facebook, you're doing postings, you're scheduling next weekend's farmer's market. And, exactly. and you're now starting to go to grocery stores and knock on doors and say, Hey, you guys want to put this on the shelf? You started doing that too? Yeah. So we started doing that shortly after. Exactly. And, what, about, and, what about, what about like all the FDA stuff and all these food? Yeah. Were, you, were you like, eh, we'll worry we'll about that later. You know, this is a great story. So, you know, the FDA requires you to have a commercial kitchen. So I'm like, okay, I don't have one of those yet. I better get one. So I get one, I register and, you know, I register my condo. Okay. And, and I've got my garage and, and, you know, the health inspector comes and he's like, Hey, yeah, you can store your product in your garage. That's fine. As long as it's, you know, several inches above the ground and it's insulated and whatnot. Pass the inspection. The inspector actually marked that my garage instead of a commercial storage facility was a commercial manufacturing facility. So we got the approval saying that it was an actual manufacturing company and so license. So you could make it right there in the garage. Yeah, I could. Or, or in the kitchen or <laughs> at the house, basically. At the house, at the house. <laughs> <laughs> so we did. So we did. And, uh, so you, know, you, know, you know, we just kept selling, kept selling and kept growing and growing. And then I realized, you know, if we're going to scale to the next level, these big grocery chains are requiring certificates of insurance. Yeah. They're requiring yeah. 
all that registration and they're not, my, my garage isn't going to bypass this. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, you know, I went to, I went to a commercial manufacturing facility. My mom and I rented out a commercial kitchen. It was a bar, small little mom and pop okay. bar. Okay. We rented out commercial kitchen. They would open till midnight, close at one o'clock in the morning. My mom and I would come in at one thirty in the morning, Friday nights, and we would cook hot sauce all the way until Sunday. And then go to work at your full-time job. Yep. And then do the farmer's markets on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday mornings. All right. Can, let me just take a pause here for a minute. They talk about hustle, right? Holy cow. Were you married with kids or anything? Like what, what was your fam? What was your personal family situation at that time? Did you have other stuff on your own you were also trying to manage or were you a single guy? That's a single guy, but I do have a son. So I had my son and I was taking care of him as well. So I was a family man, father, taking care of my son, all while doing this, working full time, providing for him as well as trying to grow this hot sauce brand. Wow, bro. You had no free time. What was your uh, your employer, your other employer at the time? They, they probably, I mean, they see that you're doing this, right? Are they cool with it? Are they like worried you're spending too much? How did that work? You know, that's a great story because, you know, they were on the fence about it. There were people that supported it, but there were some higher ups that were like, okay, you know, is he uh -huh. really spending his time working uh -huh. here? Uh -huh. you yeah. got, I got kind of tossed in the pickle. The director of my department really loved me. I was always a great, great at what I did, but then my manager didn't really like it. She always was trying to micromanage me and tell me, yeah. hey, you need to be off your phone when you're doing this. And I'm sitting there like designing my website on Wix on my phone, you know <laughs> what I mean? While taking calls in between and talking. And, you know, I'd be like sneaking it out and doing the best I could and yeah you know yeah I remember a lot of people go ahead oh no I was gonna say so we had this VP come down vice president of our sales team comes down talks to me he comes and talks to me and he's like so you're the hot sauce guy I'm like, yeah would you like a bottle I gave him a bottle of hot sauce and I said what do you think about getting this in the cafeteria here at work and he looked me dead in the eye and said no don't even try oh really you know what I did the next day I went on my lunch break and I went to the cafeteria, gave the bottle to the chef. The chef loved it and said, I'll take a couple of cases. Next thing you knew, it was up at the cafeteria. <laughs> that's, that's what happened. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Okay, now, this is a, this, I think this is great for the listeners. You know, so many entrepreneurs, Tofik, you know, they, they're stressed about, do I work my other job and do this on the side? Do I quit my job and go all in? And, and they're all, you know, uh, early entrepreneurs are always like, this is a major decision for them, right? And it's a big stress point because they're worried about how, well, if I do quit my job, then how do I pay my bills? Blah, 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 blah. A lot of our recent guests, a lot of recent entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial guests have said, hey, I'm a big fan of keeping your job and starting what you want to do on the side and just see if you can get traction. Prove to yourself that there are people that want your product that are paying you cash. Get it going and then leave your other job. A lot of people that we've had on the show lately push that message. Um, did you do it that way out of necessity or would you still encourage entrepreneurs to do it like that? You know, that's, that's a great question. You know, I was in such a unique situation. So I started this company with everything I had. I had $2,000 in my savings and I think I had a credit card that had like a $3,000 limit. <laughs> and, and, you know, so my, my position at the corporate job, I was almost like an internal financial advisor. So mind you while building Lola's, starting the company and doing all this hustle on the side, I am also studying for my Series 7, which is my securities license test. I'm studying for my Series 66. I passed my Series 7 past my 66, and we're in this kind of transition period. It's 2000, 2015, the Department of Labor is cracking down, changing the rules in the financial industry, changing advisors to go into more of a role that is, you need to take care of your client, you need to do more regulations, there's more rules. And I am also simultaneously being kind of pushed out of my own department by my own manager, because she's like, Tufik's not focused here anymore, he's only focused on hot sauce. Okay. Even though I passed all my tests and all qualifications, I go take my Series 7 test. During my test, I pass it. There's a gentleman sitting outside in this nice, sharp-looking suit. I talk to him, and he said, you know, he start, we, we start talking, and he says, oh, what are you here for? I'm like, I'm here for this company, and we're, we're, I'm taking my test. He's like, oh, I work for that company too, but I'm on the other side. I run a firm with the company, an independent firm, and I manage the whole area. And we get to talking, and I tell him I'm starting a hot sauce company, and he's like, oh, yeah, you got hot sauce? I'm like, yeah, you want one? I walk to my car, grab him, give him the hot <laughs> The guy was just so enthralled. He's like, I can't believe you crap me hot sauce out of your truck. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love it, bro. I love it. Gave me a business card. Said, let's grab coffee. 
you know, and I'm still, I'm still selling hot sauce. I'm still working my full-time job. And I somehow found time to meet this gentleman for coffee. Okay. Little did I know this gentleman would change my life. He said, listen, you've got the hustle. I've never seen anybody like this before. We have a flexible position where you can build your own financial advisor business all while doing whatever you want. No micromanagement for this. Oh, 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 bingo right there. You're like, you to come over and join me. And you're I said, like, you're like, you're like, are you, that's perfect. That's, that's <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. This is like right time. So, so I went there and, you know, I ended up being a financial advisor for three and a half, four years, all while building Lola's and skilling it all at the same time. And I, I never slept, man. I never slept. I would go to client appointments, client dinners, happy hours, every single thing that I could do. And then in between, I'm going to Hy-Vee, checking on my products, see how it's doing on the shelf. Going to Demwet stores is crazy. Meanwhile, now I have to, I have to ask, the clients that you're servicing there also could be investors for Lola's because they all have money. So are you thinking that too? Or were there, were there any opportunities with that? How did that work? You know, it's funny because that's exactly what it's turned into. As I've progressed and had that business, I've moved that business over somewhere else and focused on Lola's because Lola's has now grown to the point where I had to leave the financial advisor work because yeah. there's rules and regulations in there. Yeah. So I left the advisor world. I'm more of an advisor consultant. So I'll help individuals along the way because I have good connections with great people, but the hot sauce is the main focus. Yeah. And, you know, fast forward to now, you know, we're in 4,500 retailers across the country. Really? Oh, bro. Hey, con wow. Congratulations, man. Thank wow. You. Wow. Wow. Canada, Australia, the Philippines, we're in all of the major food service distribution. We work with U.S. Foods, Cisco, Martin Brothers, Performance Food Group. I work with Kroger, Whole Foods, Natural yeah. Grocers, Target, Hy-Vee, Stop and Shop. I mean, Albertson, Safeway, you name it, we're in there. How many, uh, and are you using a co-packer to, 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 to do it for you for the major? Okay. We do. We do. Yep. Use a co-packer. And that, I believe that has been key to our success because rather than dump a bunch of capital into machinery and hard assets that yep. Yep. you've got to find yep. a way to pay off, you're yep. able to scale. Yep. Yep. Can I ask, so there's two questions I want to ask right here. How did your mom react when you told, when you said, we're going to put trust and faith in a co-packer to make it as good as you? That had to be, can you just talk, I'm guessing that was a yeah. A stress point for everybody, right? Talk, can you talk about that for a minute? Oh my God, it was. So, you know, my mom trusted me to do everything. I did everything. You know, our first co-packer we use in Denver, Colorado. Okay. Great co-packer. And I learned everything about hot sauces. They were doing all kinds of crazy foods out there. Okay. And this particular co-packer, you know, and it was a crazy story because this is an entrepreneurial horror story that I went through. This co-packer was great, but we got into grocery stores that were competing with his own line of hot sauce. Oh, oh see, there you go. Yep. All, all right. of a sudden, all of a sudden, our orders, if I placed an order, my lead time to you, get the you, were, you were on the backside. <laughs> on the back and I, I had this huge deal with uh, Fuego Box. It's a company I don't know if you've heard of or, or uh -huh. uh, Monthly yeah. Pepper Box. It's one of those monthly subscription boxes where they get your hot sauce and they send it to 50,000 people that pay for a subscription service. Okay. I scored that deal. I've come to find out that he tried to get that deal too, but oh, they turned it down. Oh boy. My product was scheduled to ship at a certain date so it could meet their shipment time. It did not show up on time. Oh boy. And we ended All up right. having to work with the next box. So right then and there, this manufacturer was just screwing me left and right. Gotcha. I ended up leaving $5,000 worth of product there that I had bought. Not made, mind you. This is jars, labels, lids, uh, produce, and got what I could and shipped it shipped it back home you know okay, okay. And so i'm sitting here stuck i've got and i well, orders, mind you, you got you got you got orders you got customers calling you like hey man where's our stuff here's where it gets even crazier <laughs> i had just closed my very uh second largest deal which was kroger my largest deal which was kroger oh, oh, man. 347 stores all of dallas and houston in texas and you had no and you and you and you, and you were you're thinking i don't i gotta get a new co-packer like i don't even know how i'm gonna fill those orders i had exactly i had 30 days to get product made <laughs> It was during the holidays. I was in Las Vegas with my family. I was freaking the heck out. I didn't know what to do. I get a call from this wonderful guy, this guy that I work with who sources all of our sustainable peppers and everything that we use. And he says, I've got a guy that you might want to talk to. He's, he's a smaller facility, but he is very good at what he does. He's detailed. He's family-oriented, family man. You need to go meet him. Okay. I'm exhausted all options. I left my family Christmas. I flew a red eye flight out of Las Vegas to, I flew into Houston, Texas, and drove three hours to a small little town. Okay. <laughs> I met this gentleman and uh, we immediately hit it off to his facility. He said, I can make your product and I did can you, make your product. 
Did you did you say can you make it in the next twenty days? Because I got to get this stuff to Kroger. <laughs> I said I need to make it in the next twenty days. Can we start today? He said no, but we can start tomorrow. How long are you in town for? I said as long as it needs. I was in town for one week. We perfected the right. recipe. My mom flew in. We taste tested it. We tried it, and boom, we just skyrocketed wow. with it. And that boom, our first order. It was make it or break it time. Wow, that is that's wow. So how many? All right, now as it stands today, uh, how many employees? So right now we've got across, so we have a restaurant too. If you include the restaurant with Lola's, we're looking at 25 to 30 employees and we're always adding more. We have a lot of contractors, a lot of part-timers, and then we have our managers and key players in place. And the co-packer that you use, right? I mean, if you were manufacturing it yourself, you'd obviously have a lot more employees, but. Well, we have a couple of co-packers now. We have three oh. of them. Yeah, we have three of them that we use. We have one in our home to home home state here in Iowa. We have one in Wisconsin and we have one in Texas and each one services a different region. Wow. How many stores did you say you're in? About 4,500. Wow. Do, do you mind sharing? Um, I don't know if you want to share these, this detail or not. We can always, I can always edit it out of the podcast if you want to, but like how many units are you selling? How many units will you set? Will you sell in 2019? Can you share that? I don't know if you want to. No, that's a good question. It's still hit or miss. I mean, in, in 2019, we're, you know, we're roughly around 500,000 units. So half a million. Wow. Wow. From the moment you took that hot sauce off the shelf, by the way, have you thought back and thought, man, if I hadn't grabbed that hot sauce off that shelf to take to the potluck that day, none of this would have happened. That is exactly right. None of this would have happened if I didn't do that. I mean, just let that sink in for a minute as a listener, just like, wow, isn't it amazing how the little turns left and right in your life, you know, you happen, you just happen to do something left or right or go through a doorway and it just it just creates this path. Wow, that is that is amazing. And now, 500,000 units in 2019, bro. Are you kidding me? Congratulations, yeah. man. Thank you. Meanwhile, no food and beverage experience, no manufacturing experience, never ran a company before, no CEO experience. Boom, here you are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here I am. Yes. Wow, wow. That is, okay, how about the restaurant? Can you talk about the restaurant for a minute? When did, when did you guys decide, look, <laughs> We're not busy enough. We don't have enough stress in our lives. Let's start a restaurant, <laughs> yeah, so <you laughs> which, is, which, is, which is, by the way, one of the highest failure rates of anything you can possibly do, but let's start a restaurant. You know, it almost seems like it was coincidence because, you know, growing up when I was, when I was, when I literally graduated high school, I left my town, moved to Des Moines. I lived with my sister for a little bit. And, you know, I look back at it. My sister was very good at creating food and she was also very good at saving it. So if there were leftovers, okay. she'd pull it in a nice sealed container. It'd all be ready in the fridge. And I would always eat the leftovers. Yeah. I know it sounds bad, but it was just well, I, so good. I Everything do that now. Yeah. Scratch. Yeah. Yeah. And so she saw the success I was having and she came to me and said, Hey, Tufik, you know, what if we got mom and, and what if you help me out? Cause I actually have restaurant experience. I used to open and, and open and manage restaurants at a period of point in my life. Oh, okay. Said, what if you help me open up a restaurant and we share mom's cookie? You're, everybody loves the hot sauce. And I said, a wonderful idea. What concept do you have? Lola's fine kitchen. Let's take the same logo. Let's take the same brand. Let's go ahead and fuse mom's food together. Let's fuse the Filipino side and let's fuse the Pakistani side. We have a, uh, roti bread. Roti bread which is Pakistani. It's like a naan, a thinner naan made of durum wheat flour. My sister said, what if we made tacos? What if we took those made tacos? And then what if we took the bowls, like the biryani, which is a nice seasoned cumin rice with uh, fresh meat and seasonings and spices. And what if we took those and had bowls? So we do build your own bowls, build your own roti tacos, on this side, you've got Filipino food like adobo chicken, which is our, our Filipino version of barbecue chicken. Okay. On this side, you got tandoori chicken. Put them in a taco. See what it's like. <laughs> Love it. Food, food blew through the roof. Uh, we've been in business now for two years in the restaurant, and uh, we've won two years in a row, best restaurant at Ankeny, which is a large suburb of Des Moines. Wow. Now, did you fund, the, you funded the opening of the restaurant with cash from Lola's hot sauce business? Is that how that worked or it's a Correct. Okay. Company is a combination of everything. Funded the restaurant through Lola's and through some working capital for our mom. Okay. My mom started to believe in everything that we did and, and always supported everything that we have. And awesome. my sister put in a little bit of money as well. And, and her sweat equity is to run the place and I'm there doing the marketing. And your, your mom's name is Lola, right? So, so here's the story with Lola. So my mom's name is actually Carmelita. Okay. Lola in Tagalog, which is the language of the Philippines, means grandma. And I had a son very early in my age. And my mom 
bless her heart, help me take care of him while I was okay. going through college. Okay. Help me, help me do everything to get everything done. You know, I was a single father growing up and, and my mom helped me and my, my son always called her Lola. My mom thought I, I was see. Lola and I then my see. sister started to have kids and they all called her Lola. And every time my mom showed up, we wouldn't say, Hey, go talk to mom. We'd always say, go talk to Lola. I see. That's how, okay. All right. All right. Got it. I appreciate you sharing that with me. So your sister now runs the restaurant. Basically. Correct. You, yep. gotcha. she's, okay. she's my chef and managing partner over there. What was she doing before? She was a hairdresser. <laughs> that's, that's so awesome. Is your mom uh, is still a doctor or is she retired or what's, what's she doing now? Yeah, she'll never retire. She'll work till she dies. She loves being a doctor. She loves taking care of people. She, right now, she's actually in Alaska. She's in a small town in Alaska taking care of people in a small village. So she does a lot of charity work, and then she'll do work for doctors that need to take time off and vacation. She'll come and relieve them. So she does a lot of charitable. And, what? what? Oh, yeah. okay. Now, oh, wow. Now, now I have to interview your mom. I mean, come on. <laughs> like, amazing, yeah. She's like, okay, I'm going to help support my son start a, a fine hot sauce company. I'm going to help. My daughter started a restaurant, and oh, by the way, I'm going to volunteer my time and go help people in need in Alaska, and I'm a, doc <laughs> and I'm a doctor. Like, what? Okay, wow. Uh, oh, oh, and I'm going to help, you know, Tofik, you know, raise his son, too. Yeah, she's <laughs> wow, but uh, yeah, man, she's a saint, right? Like, holy cow. She is, she is a saint. All right, I know she'll, she'll listen to this podcast, right? Probably, I'm sure. Oh, I'm going to send it. I'm going to send it to her. <laughs> <laughs> that is... What a story. I mean, really, what a story. Can I? All right. So let me ask you a few questions around the operating piece of the business. Yes. When, 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 early on, backing up just a, just a tad, because a lot of our listeners, they have an idea. I think a lot of our listeners have an idea like, I want to start a hot sauce company or something, right? They have this thing, but a lot of them, um, they don't know how to finance it. They don't have the cash. They just don't have the cash. Did you bootstrap all that? Like you just bootstrapped it, right? You didn't take on an investor. You didn't borrow a bunch of cash. You just nope. slowly like, I'm going to sell it to some friends. Then I'm going to put it on Facebook. And then my mom's going to make it in the kitchen. And then I'm going to use that cash to make some more. And, and that's how you did it, right? You didn't, you didn't like go down and get a big loan or anything, did you? Oh, absolutely. In fact, banks to this date, they're so hard to work with, you know? Right. I bootstrapped everything, you know? I mean, everything from wherever I could save a penny. Like I said, I started it with, uh, I had $1,000. My mom gave me another $1,000. And then I used $3,000 on my credit card. I had no other help from that. Uh, and I just grew slowly, you know, I grew slowly. But we were able to grow fast because I didn't stop selling. Wherever there was a market, there was an event, I would get to it and I would go do it. You know what I mean? I'd be, I'd go do, I, I, I'd time it out. So like, let's say Thursday, I'm going to an event in Mason City, Iowa, you know, up north, closer to Minnesota. I, I'd time it out so there's an event, but then they'd also have six high V's and I'd go to six high V's and I'd be like, hey, I've got a hundred cases of hot sauce. I'll give you a deal, you know? <laughs> you know? I love it. So, all right. And do you guys own 100% of the company? You haven't taken any cash or investors to this point, right? You guys own everything. We have. So, th so th at this point in time, we've taken small equity investors. So okay. we're growing because we're right now we're in a scale where we're almost doing, we're going to be in a position in the next, uh, I'm going to say in the next 60 days where we're going to be manufacturing anywhere from half a million to a million dollars worth of inventory in one month and then sustain all the growth that we have. Wow. It's okay. coming to the point where, yeah. uh, and that's just for one client. That's for the Walmart account that we're working on and other accounts that we're working on too. Gotcha. So we want to be prepared. December and January is a big time for category review for a lot of these major grocery stores. So right. just to go back to the operating piece of our business, we use a co-packer, but we also use national distribution. We don't do any direct distribution. We try to sell okay. direct as much as possible, but we're using like KHE and UNFI. And these are the world's okay. largest national retailers, yep. distributors. Yep. Yep. Um, we're active in every single one of their distribution centers. And on top of that, we've launched new lines of products. Like we've got our brand new salsas that we've launched. All right. All right. Excellent. <laughs> we've got our brand new Bloody Mary mix. You know what I mean? It's Now, how do I, by the way, for the listeners, do they order, can they order off Amazon? Can they order right off your website or they, do they, is it only in brick and mortar? T talk about that. Absolutely. You can find us in all three. So we can order direct online. We have a great shipping program. Um, you can also get on Amazon. You can only get the hot sauces and some of the salsas on Amazon, but you get the full product line on website. And then in most of your retailers across the country, you can find our hot sauces. Uh, so, and these, go ahead. 
Oh, sorry. I, I just go ahead. You were going to say something about that product. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, so like the mixers and the salsas, these are relatively new. They're in every single Hy-Vee Fairway grocery store, which is in the Midwest. Same with the salsas, but we just got them slotted in our national distribution. So these are going to be going national uh, to some accounts during presentations that we have. But also we have an endorsement with Chad Greenway from the Minnesota Vikings. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, now, is that what some of the, uh, did you say you took on some investors? Was that a PE firm or angel investors or what kind of, what kind? No, just, just, just a local friend that okay. I know that has okay. you know, okay. part of the okay. business. It's, it's a very small stink. You know, I, okay. I retain a huge majority. I, okay. You, absolutely. Yeah. All right. You, you guys are in control. You took on just like a little 1%. bit of cash. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Getting those endorsements though. Now that's usually not cheap. That use, that's <laughs> usually a major investment. What, what caused you, what, why did you decide to do that? You know, that, that was great. You know, these endorsements, you know, I wouldn't say necessarily they're free, uh, but it's more of a strategic partnership. So Chad Greenway, uh, former Iowa Hawkeye Hall of Fame, just retired from the Vikings last year, played for 10 years. Okay. He was launching a vodka in Iowa and he had a Minnesota vodka. And I'm thinking to myself, I've got this Bloody Mary mix simultaneously that I'm launching. What if we just shoot this dude an email and see if he responds back? We weren't thinking he was going to. <laughs> we <up> website, <laughs> sent an email and said, hey, hey, Chad, you know, we're a national company. We're trying to make some headway in Minnesota, but we've also got this great Bloody Mary mix. Uh, we'd love to launch it. We can help you out in Iowa. Maybe you could help us out in Minnesota. So sends us an email back within an hour and says, hey, man, I got your hot sauce in my fridge. Why don't you uh, come what? up? What? Oh, oh, now, how, how did he have the hot sauce? Because he had already bought it or you had sent him some? Already already bought it and already sent him some. So, so our product was already in Hy-Vee in Minnesota. We just wanted wow. in like the Minnesota chains like London Byerly's, Coborn's, and, and Kowalski's. And to be honest, we had a hard time getting in. And you had no idea that he had already tasted the, the hot no, sauce? No, no, not at all. He said if the hot, Bloody Mary mix is anything like your hot sauce, it's got to be good. Wow. So, you know, he sends us an email back, says, you want to come over to my place and film a video? And we said, yeah. We drove the next day. <laughs> yes. Oh, he's like, hold on, let me think about it. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Went to his huge, beautiful home, met his beautiful family, met the whole Grey Duck team. They're a wonderful people. They have a phenomenal product, too. It's unreal. It's some of the best vodka that I personally have, and they've won awards. And, wow. and you know, we filmed the video, and, and Chad endorsed the product, and we took those endorsements, and, and we started doing signings. We brought him to do some signings at hy -Vee, Okay. sell some product, introduce the product, and still to this date, we represent Grey Duck here in Iowa. We really push it with our product because – the Great Egg Vodka has such a unique taste that infused with our Southern Jalapeno, it really hits. Oh, wow. Hits really wow. 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 Yes. Um, okay. Let me, okay. Let me ask you a couple of questions here now. Advice for entrepreneurs. So do you, if, for those folks that are, are, are scared and nervous about getting started, you know, they have an idea. What's your, what's your, primary words of wisdom for them they're, they're driving to work every day they have a regular job they want to do something but they just haven't gotten started because they're nervous what would you tell them you'll figure it out because being scared like i'm scared every day every day you know my <laughs> business is growing and it's there's so many different aspects of a business because in my business you know, like I just got back from New Orleans. I presented to a grocery chain down there. And then I, I am in review right now for a major grocery chain, a uh, very large company uh, based in Florida. And they have around 1,500 grocery stores that stretch all the way up and down the East Coast. I'm not going to name them, but people will know. I, I can, yeah, I can. Yeah, I was just about to say the name, people but I, know, I know who it probably is. keep it under the radar okay. until we okay. finalize okay. things. But okay. you know, for now, you go to these reviews and you get reviewed. And all of a sudden, maybe two weeks later, you're going to get an email back saying, hey, we, we love your product. We're going to slot you in X number of stores. And that X number of stores could be your Kroger story. could be like me. I sent my product to the buyer at Kroger. I got an email back. I've never even met him to this day. I got an email back and he said, I love your hot sauce. This is the best hot sauce I've ever had. I'm going to slot you in 347 stores. I mean, that's... <laughs> that's what that's what this business is you know what i mean i think i hear you saying hey bro you're gonna be scared it's okay just go for it just, just go for it absolutely go for it and being scared it's a good thing because it's gonna you're gonna figure it out you're gonna figure out and if you are true you truly believe in your business you're gonna make it work no matter what and that's right. what being an entrepreneur is 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 going into the unknown and not knowing what's gonna happen and taking control of that and seizing it. And it gives you so much more than if you make it through, you're going to have a successful business. You're going to have a successful product, but it's going to give you skills that are going to take you further than any other position. Right. Ever. 
It, 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 absolutely right. Yep. <laughs> Even if your business lasts for three years and it fails, you're going to learn more doing that, running it as an entrepreneur than you ever would have learned anywhere else. Absolutely. You know, I've had so many failures and many people have had failures in their life too. You know, there's so many business owners that have filed bankruptcy yep. several times and then come back and now they're billionaires. What, yep. can, you, what can you do? You know, yep. It's, yep. Oh. You're now, the other thing that was a first for you is all of a sudden you're a CEO managing 20 or 30 people. I mean, you had never been over that, that many people, right? At least in the, in the captain's chair. So this is also a first and you're kind of learning on the fly what it's like to be a CEO, right? Over that many people. Yeah. What, what, what advice would you give first time CEOs or let's, let's take, for example, let's say there's a, uh, maybe there's a tech company and this guy had a great tech idea and he's a, he's a great developer and all of a sudden he's over 30 people and he's never even been a manager before. <laughs> what would you, what would you tell those first time CEOs? Yeah. You know, CEO is just a title. The, the biggest thing is like when I started this company, I had two business cards. I had one that said CEO and then I had one that said sales manager. So when I'm going to present my products to change, you know, I would say I'm the sales manager because if I'm going to meet Kroger, they don't expect the CEO to come out and meet them. They expect a broker. They expect a divisional VP of the company to come out. So I would give them the regional vice president business card. You know, the biggest thing that I would say is being a CEO, it's, it's not about the title. It's about the leadership. It's about inspiring your team, treating them well, giving when you can, and leading by example. And that's the biggest thing is business every day. I wake up like it's I'm at the Super Bowl, and everybody around me is a competition. But you do it in a harmonious way, it, and you, you just lead your staff because sometimes your staff – may think they're going into the unknown and they are, they're going into the unknown with you and they're growing with you. Mm -hmm. So you have to give them that reassurance. And the best thing is being a CEO is all about being a, a leader and being good to your people and being good to everybody. You know, your, your energy level is contagious, bro. I mean, seriously, <laughs> I mean, when you're, yeah, I'm sure when people are around you, they're just like, okay, yeah, I'm, I, let's go. Let's, 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 we can do anything. <laughs> I love it. I get it all the time. I do. Do, you, do you get that from your mom or dad or, or both? Or, or is that just you? Or like, where does that come from? <laughs> you know, that's crazy. I get it from my mom. It's just come with both. So my dad is super smart. My dad is okay. in the army, was a surgeon army, retired doctor. He is, did it right. You know what I mean? He followed his path, non-entrepreneurial. And he's done successful things. But now he's been an entrepreneur. He's buying real estate all over Florida. Oh. And, but my mom, my mom growing up was you know, she was that entrepreneur. She always encouraged me to do things. And you know, here's a funny story. This is crazy. So my mom's a doctor, ran her own clinic. We used to have drug reps come in all the time. My oh, oh, first I entrepreneurial stunt, we had the Pfizer reps come through the door. Okay. They'd come in with, they'd bring in steaks, they'd bring in Panera, they'd bring in everything. And they were there three times a week because of a drug called Viagra. Okay. Drug was a popular drug, but they came in one day. They had these awesome pens. Okay, these pens were like gold-plated pens. Looked super nice. Were shaped like uh, they were shaped interesting. Let's just. <laughs> I saw that as an opportunity. What if I brought all these stacks of pens to school and see oh. if I could sell them? Oh, they, they would sell right away. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I brought in ten pens. I sold them for twenty bucks a piece. I came home with two hundred bucks. I remember walking up to Linda, my mom's nurse, and I'm like, Linda, what do I do with this money? You know what I mean? And I was only, it was middle, that was seventh grade. So I would have been 13, 14, maybe. <laughs> and it's like, did you take that from your mom's purse? Because my mom's purse was sitting. <laughs> and then I'm like, no, I just got home from school. And she's like, oh, how'd you get it from school? I said, I sold those Viagra pants. And, and she's like, oh my God, you did what? And uh, <laughs> my mom comes out of a patient and I'm like, mom, I, I made some money selling those pens. My mom looks at me and says, keep them. Keep it. Keep cable, it. Cable. Uh, go for it. Go yeah. for it. <laughs> Do you want to bring some of the t-shirts to school too? <laughs> oh, that's so good. That is so great. I, you know, your story is so inspiring because I'm just thinking for a second, I'm imagining I'm a billionaire investor and I meet you and you're working for this, this, this wealth management company. And you know, you're, you're, you're just an employee there. You got no food experience, no entrepreneurial experience, no CEO experience, nothing. And you come to visit me and you're like, hey, I need you to invest in my company. I'm just imagining the, how this conversation might go. And I say something like, well, you know, what's your experience? And you tell me zero. <laughs> and, and then I start thinking like, there's hot sauces everywhere. I mean, if you go to a farmer's market, like 25% of the booths are 
the hot sauce. I don't know. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but it feels that way, right? Like I, every time I go to one of those things, everybody's got a hot sauce. As an entrepreneur, as, a, as an investor, I probably would have been like, no, I'm not like, no, your chances of making it are almost zero. Uh, but you, you just went for it, man, your hustle and your energy. And I really think that's what's so important. I don't care what the competition is. I don't care if there's a million other coffee shops, if there's a million other, you know, hot sauce companies. If you got the desire and the hustle and you are willing to take risks, you can do so many things. I mean, it really comes, now you do have to have a good product and you made sure that your mom had a good product. You do have to have a good product, but it's the hustle, man. And so many people just won't do that. They just won't, right? Exactly. And, and, you know, it's all about the hustle. You know, it's all about hustle and timing and really just believing in your product. It is. And, and, and man, I tell you, I work all the time. Like, I sleep four hours a day. Like, I mean, even still to this date, I work till 2 a.m. I get up at 7 a.m. every morning and I am grinding every day. Sometimes, really, right. I'm grinding. I'm trying to find time for my fiance, my son, uh, you know, my staff and, and my family and, and amidst all the other ventures that we have. And the biggest thing is hustle. You know it what I mean? It is. It is. I remember we, for Rider Flex, our recruiting firm, we have like the process that we have is like right on the website. Like we're not hiding anything. You know, for you, it would be like, like here's a, and I, we had early uh, advisors say, oh, yeah, don't, don't, don't share your process. Somebody might steal that. And I would always say, are you kidding me? I'm like, they're not going to do it. I, I know most recruiting firms won't <laughs> do it. They just won't do it. They will not go to this much effort. They won't be as thorough. I'm not worried about it. I know 90% of them won't do it. <laughs> and so to, speaking to your point, it's the hustle. Most people just, they won't hustle as much. And so I'm going to out, I'm going to out hustle them. I'm going to be more thorough. Uh, we kind of have the same approach and that's why you've been so successful. That's what, so I need, I need, do I need to give you my address? Cause I need a case shipped to, yes, to my house. <laughs> <you, right? laughs> I'm just, everything. Uh, <laughs> I almost said you want to go, just give me an email with the address and I'll get it to you. Uh, I'm just kind of joking, but kind of not. <laughs> uh, I'm going to send it to you. Oh. I will send you that. So for the listeners, um, really, if they just go to lolasfinehotsauce.com, boom, they can get everything they need from there. Plus all your social media icons are on that. They can go to Facebook, Instagram. I mean, you guys have, a ton of followers on social media. I mean, a ton. Yeah. We're, we're growing. It's, it's slowly, but slowly, but steady. And keep in mind, we do it all in house too. So we don't have any, uh, well, we do have an outsource agency, but it's an agency that I own. So it's actually a gentleman <laughs> that used to work with me for three years. And we would get calls all the time that are like, Hey, can you help us create content? Your videos. Well, you, you have, hold on. You have another business. <laughs> yeah. So we have a marketing firm. It's called apps, web, social. And what we what? do, <laughs> 30 different clients and we work right with all of them. And what we're doing is we're doing digital marketing, SEO, and it's my right hand man that had been helping me grow the company. Um, he works for me in the, in the, in the company he used to. And I said, Hey man, we got all these clients that want help. As long as you promise I am the only hot sauce slash salsa. <laughs> will do. I will help you get this thing started and get you on your feet. And I oh, did. It's I, 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 I'm just, all right, let me just take a breath here. <laughs> Out of everything we just learned, you just kind of casually slid in. Oh, by the way, I have a marketing firm business too. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. All right. You, you are an inspiration, my friend. What is the name of that company? It's called apps, web social. And they can go to appswebsocial.com. And it's uh, basically, we have 30 different clients where you specialize in. I mean, we have all kinds of companies from million dollar bacon co uh, port companies to uh, uh, million dollar gun companies. We're working with a scope company. There's so many companies that wow. we work with 30 and we wow. do all of their marketing, their digital SEO, um, online strategy, content creation, everything, videography, you name it. And he is a whiz. He'd been with wow. me and, wow. uh, and I only have a small stake in it, but I just, but still. To, me, to me, it's helping more people in an indirect way, you know? Man, I don't, uh, I don't, like you said, I don't know when you sleep. I don't know how you, uh, well, I, I, sleep. I, I don't like to sleep. <laughs> Congratulations uh, to Afik on everything really uh, that you have accomplished and your family as well. I mean, what an inspiring story. It really is. I, I, I appreciate you being on the Rider Flex podcast and sharing it with everybody. Um, it really is. Thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure, man. And I, I'm super humbled to be here. It's incredible. You know, it's going to, it's going to help a lot of people that are, that are trying to get started. They're going to be inspired. Hell, I'm inspired. Like I, <laughs> Whatever my to-do list was before I started talking to you today, it's not long enough. I need to do more. <laughs> I need to do more. All right, my friend. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate it.
congrats. Um, and I hope to meet you in person soon. Next time you're Absolutely. in Colorado, next time you're in Colorado, we got to connect. Oh, that's a done deal. I'm actually presenting to Colorado next week. Maybe we can connect next week. What? Okay. Send me your schedule. Let's try I to will. connect. I'll switch my schedule. I will let you know. All right, bro. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thanks, Steve. Take care. Thank you. The Rider Flex podcast features entrepreneurs, business executives, and the stories behind how they got there, as well as daily tips on career advice and job interviews. Our show can be heard just about anywhere these days, but you can visit riderflex.com and click on the podcast page to hear all the previous episodes and learn more about the recruiting and consulting services we provide. Contact us at the email address info at riderflex.com or 888-964-5876. Thanks so much for listening. And if you enjoy our show, please be sure to subscribe to our channel and like the episodes.